Yes, like I explained before, you don't really need land to build a billion dollar company. Some of the richest companies in the world, like Apple and Microsoft, were not built on land. So it's kind of stupid and backwards to think that you can prevent certain people from uh, growing or, or gaining wealth by simply preventing them from accessing land. But what has drawn my attention, um, or what is capturing my attention at this time, is the fact that Vice News has recently released their uh, investigative report after an interview that they conducted sometime, I think, in December last year with uh, the Vice President uh, of Guyana, the main Vice President in Guyana. And they've concluded, or at least that interview is now available on YouTube, and I've actually watched it. I'm going to put a link to that video. Um, that is a Vice video down in uh, the comment sec in the description section below. And what the Vice interview reveals is that there is still a very clumsy um, corruption scheme that is operating in Guyana that is based on bribery. So there's a Guyana has a cash economy, right? We don't really use a lot of credit cards and debit cards and um, digital payments. So this fits in well, that is the interviewer's conclusions fit well with the facts of the economy in Guyana, right? We have a cash economy. And what the interviewer is saying is that certain Chinese who have been given access to large tracts of land for gold mining and for logging have um, come out and said that there is a bribery scheme that allows them to pass cash to the vice uh, president and this allows them to get access to the resources that they need in Guyana and if you look around this is confirmed because some of the fastest growing um, businesses and investments are actually coming from China in Guyana so this is happening at the same time that the same government is preventing um, access to land by legitimate Guyanese businesses, right? So that is the nature, that is the politics, that's the reality of the politics that's happening here in Guyana. And so this is what I'd want to draw your attention to. It's not far-fetched, it's not complaining, it's not looking for race, it's, yeah man. So it's, it's that, this, these are the facts on the ground and people who, who don't live here don't fully understand that this is what is happening, right? So number one is that there seems to be a systematic bribery scheme that allows access to foreign investors, that is access to Chinese businessmen, for example, large tracts of land in Guyana for mining, for business operations, building buildings and so on, and for logging, but access to land is very, very difficult for Guyanese to get right because there is a system here where uh, this government thinks that land is how you control wealth and as I said before in the last video that is an archaic and ancient view it's not it's not true anymore you can build wealth without land the second aspect of that is the corruption aspect of it right so that some people um, didn't believe when I suggested that there's a lot of corruption that's still happening in, in, in Guyana. Now you go take a look at that video and you can trust me that a lot of it makes sense, right? A lot of what is being talked about um, by the uh, interviewer laying out how uh, the corruption schemes work here, a lot of it makes sense to people who live here. It's believable, right? It's also very dangerous to talk about because some people have been um, you know, harmed physically because of uh, their either involvement or their um, trying to reveal the truth about corruption in Guyana. So, for example, it has turned out that the first thing they try to do is to shut down the whistleblowers, right? So, they're going to sue, for example, the guy Sue who has revealed these things he's going to be brought up on charges and, and sued in court for things like libel when in fact 
what we should be doing is conducting a thorough investigation of all the claims and all the accusations that have been made in the video because the only way we're going to know the facts is if we have a international and independent investigation of all of the accusations in the video and not necessarily if we shut down and silence the whistleblowers right so this is the facts this is what's happening in Guyana and finally what a lot of people seem not to understand is that there is an ongoing list of court cases in which the current government has sued the previous government members of the previous government for example the minister of uh, housing the the person who was in charge of lands and surveys was arrested and brought in uh, to the criminal investigations department and interrogated and is now being charged for giving out land the reason why they're trying to um, rescind the land that was given out in the previous during the previous administration the, during the coalition government's administration is because this government claims that that government that is our last coalition government was illegal so they have decided that all of the contracts that were signed especially in terms of land are invalid because their political view is that the coalition government was illegal and the reason why they're claiming it's illegal is because they claim that there was a vote of no confidence that was um was won and that was passed neglecting the fact that the people who voted that is members of parliament who voted during the uh, no confidence vote were occupying illegal positions in parliament in other words they were not they were not legally allowed to be parliamentarians in Guyana because they were not citizens of this country so there's a whole lot of uh, political confusion and corruption that is um, underlying and underneath this fastest growing economy and so for people who are outside and who don't understand what's going on they think that well if you talk about this stuff it's because you are you have some kind of bone to pick or because you are you know you you kind of uh, you have a grouse the fact is that there are legitimate concerns there is a political cloudiness a political confusion uh, politically driven decisions that are not based on sound economic principles that are driving um, the decisions in this country right and so for those who are on one side or on, on the or, or on another side the opposite side of the, the political the divide I leave you with this question how is it that the coalition government that signed the contract with ExxonMobil and that opened the sovereign wealth fund which now has a billion US dollars how is it that that government is being prosecuted in court by this new government which claimed that the contract with ExxonMobil was a bad contract and that they were going to renegotiate the contract while at the same time taking credit for the billions of dollars that Guyana is earning from oil and gas neglecting the fact that they campaigned against the contract with ExxonMobil and they campaigned against the sovereign wealth fund all of these contradictions are part of the landscape of Guyana right now in 2022 and it's why I decided to address them in this this video so that maybe I wouldn't clarify for you what all of these conflicts are about but I let you know that in fact they exist right for those of you who follow the channel Rafaelitos you understand that what we're doing is we are we're wading through right to exist in this country and in this world we have to separate a lot of noise and a lot of uh, confusion from the path, uh, from the facts, um, from a clear vision and understanding of where we're going as a nation. All right? Now, I hope this clarifies some of the issues with the last video, bringing to your attention that not everything you see on the, on the outside um, or happening in Guyana is uh, clearly driven by sound um economic or political deci decisions a lot of it is driven by corruption or underneath underlying corruption and, and lies and greed share this video with friends and family around the world let people know what's happening in guyana in the comments below 
Let me know what questions you have about the status of the economy and the political questions because like I said, this is a channel for politics, economics, food and fun. And while we're going to focus this season on economics, on business, on um, how you can take advantage of the economic growth in Guyana, I still don't want to leave you with the impression that everything here that glitters is gold, that there is still a lot of political um, confusion to navigate. We're going to address the immigration issues of uh, you know, the growing population in Guyana and the direction in which it is growing. Like I said, a lot of the families entering Guyana, here's another one, right, just across, it, across the street. A lot of these new people, new immigrants to Guyana, are people from Brazil and from Venezuela, you know, and they're everywhere. And they are welcome, right? It's not that we are um, anti-immigrant. In fact, we welcome new immigrants in Guyana because it's still a, um, a low population density. It's a country with a low population density, and we do need to grow a population. But you need to understand that there is a lot of politics that we still don't, um, that is still not clear, that we still don't grasp, that you need to grasp. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about the current economic growth in Guyana, right? Let me know what you think about whether you're understanding, right? Whether you're arriving at a clearer understanding of the economy in Guyana. And let me know what questions you have so I can clarify some of the, um, some of what people, especially who don't live here, still don't understand about Guyana. Share this uh, video with friends and family around the world. Let people know what's happening here in Georgetown, Guyana. Later!